okay guys so just now i discussed about a, a formal definition about a, a formal de definition of a grammar or a context free grammar so what are the things you should write here you should write about terminals and you should write about non terminals and you should write about a start symbol and you should write about a production with the sub three points that is a non terminal non terminal and non terminal that is a lhs of a production rhs of a production and in between that one arrow mark is there you should write about this one this is a formal definition it's a previous topic uh, in the beginning of this uh, main topic what i discussed it was a informal definition it, it, it is better to write both of these uh, definitions if uh, you are asked in your exam uh, like uh, define a context for grammar or something okay so very uh, interesting concepts uh, uh, we are uh, discussing guys is this is one just one example i have shown you so in this grammar what are the non terminals and what are the terminals and what are the uh, uh, this uh, that is a uh, here one symbol is there that is a right arrow mark right so these all things we uh, understood now uh, let us go to, let us go to the next topic that is a uh, 3.2.2 in my notes that is notational conventions it means that uh, uh, here uh, in our grammars uh, wherever uh, again and again we are telling no this is a terminal this is non terminal this is a terminal this is non terminal instead of writing these all things instead of saying again and again these all things we just want to uh, uh, denote them with some uh, symbols so by looking into those symbols only you will automatically understand that oh it is a terminal oh it is a non terminal like that so already one brief idea i have given you in bold letters whatever uh, we are writing in this uh, uh, book so it is actually uh, terminal right and uh, we are using some italics also so these italics are called as a non terminals but since we are human beings right we are human beings we are not computer so we cannot make our uh, text uh, bold letter or italic so in our exam also right in our answers also so because of that only what we are going to do is we are going to differentiate between these terminals and non terminals by just writing upper case letters and uh, small uh, small letters that is lower case letters so by observing your grammar you should easily tell that this is a terminal and this is a non terminal so these notations these symbols we are going to see now so wherever uh, you will observe the lower case alphabets and that too the beginning alphabets like a b c d e f g h some starting 6 to 7 alphabets if you use in a lower case letters then it is called as a terminals they are called as a terminals always remember guys the following whatever i am going to discuss here in these first point these all five sub points are there a b c d e these are called as terminals the first is a first uh, feature first characteristic is if you are uh, looking into if you are looking into uh, if you are looking into if you are looking into lower case characters that to the beginning lower case characters <laughs> guys please go on mute okay then uh, operators in your uh, terminals or non terminals suppose uh, here uh, in the mixture of your uh, rhs side so there uh, if you are looking into such kind of symbols like plus star or any slash division operator any operators any symbols they are also called as terminals and then uh, any punctuation symbols also punctuation symbols like open parenthesis close parenthesis just now in the previous class I, I have shown you id as well as open parenthesis and close parenthesis are called as symbol uh, terminals so comma semicolon so these all punctuation symbols are also belonging to terminals and the digits from 0 to 9 also belong into terminals <laughs> and some and some keywords which are written in uh, uh, keywords written in bold letters in fact in this uh, book i am telling but uh, some uh, strings uh, which are written in uh, bold letters they are also uh, representing the terminal symbols yeah now uh, how exactly non terminals will be looking so non terminals will be looking like starting alphabets again but they are in upper case upper case starting alphabets are going to represent non terminals and particularly in your production okay the first production in your grammar is containing the lhs side as a start symbol correct that start symbol is also called as a non terminal so that non terminal is represented as a capital s so to indicate it as a start symbol 
so left side of all list of productions lhs are called as non terminals among those some 6 to 7 non terminals what you have written in a 6 to 7 productions they are non terminals but the first non terminal is called as a start symbol which will be indicated by capital letter s so otherwise the remaining all non terminals will be indicated by the capital letters of a starting uh, starting alphabets which are written in uppercase letters okay so sometimes if you want to use some names directly instead of these symbols or alphabets you can use those names but they will be written in this textbook in a lower case particularly in italic so wherever you look into this lower case words or statements which are in uh, italics they are also called as non terminals right so for these expressions and statements like uh, uh, names if you don't want to write them as names if you again represent if you want to represent them again with the uh, uh, alphabets only then again you can use the uh, alphabets like uh, uh, capital letter e for expression and uh, capital letter t for term and capital letter f for factor so these are just one example i am telling you these are also maybe the non terminals okay so then we will go to uppercase letters which are last alphabets uppercase letters which are last alphabets like u v w x y z this type of last alphabets which are uppercase they are called as a grammar symbols okay these will be either non terminals or terminals they belong to both of the categories and lower case last alphabets like u v w x y w x y z these are also called as a strings of terminals these are called as strings of terminals and lower case greek letters like alpha beta gamma so this type of greek letters if you are looking into then they are called as a strings of grammar symbols strings of grammar symbols the guys these are very very important you should try to differentiate between these all things what is a grammar symbol okay what are the strings of terminals so what are the strings of grammar symbols like this you should try to differentiate whenever you look into these uh, greek letters they are called as a strings of grammar symbols okay and uh, if uh, your production is like this a is deriving or leading alpha 1 a is leading or yielding actually we should pronounce it as yield yielding okay y i e l d yield a is yielding alpha 1 a is yielding alpha 2 okay so like this up to alpha k if a is lead, uh, yielding then for this all set of productions only same non production is there same uh, head is there that is a so we can call them as all productions as a a productions because these all productions are having same non terminal or same head so we can call them as a productions then we can write these all productions in instead of writing them in a separate separate lines okay n number of lines or k number of lines in only one line we can write this production as a a is yielding alpha 1 or alpha 2 or alpha 3 up to alpha k by using this pipeline okay so here this alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha are there no these are called as alternatives for a alternatives for a it means you can replace a by alpha 1 or you can replace a by alpha 2 or alpha 3 or alpha k up to alpha k okay so then uh, these all seven points are very important guys uh, the head of the first production is a start symbol always keep it in your mind head of the first production will be start symbol and it will be usually represented by capital letter yes okay so you for your example uh, uh, for your understanding purpose i show you one example here so here one grammar we have written this grammar has a uh, basically three productions here for the first appearance actually so but it contains one two three four five six seven eight eight productions it contains guys okay don't get confusion for the first appearance it looks like just it has only three productions but it has actually five more in uh, hidden um, productions so instead of writing these pipelines here instead of writing them the pipeline here if you write uh, e as a e plus t and e as a e minus t and e as a t then these will be written as a three productions right here also you will write three productions and here also you write two productions so totally there are eight productions are there guys e can be or e can take the form e plus t 
and e can take the form e minus t or e can be only term also and now the question is what is t okay so t is nothing but t star f t divided by f or f it means only f so f means what it is already i have discussed this uh, grammar x actually okay so this f is nothing but it is a parenthesized expression okay or else it will be simply one identifier so this type of notations or symbols or alphabets in capital letter or lower case letters we can use in our uh, grammar right then the derivations now we will come to the derivation next topic that is 3.2.3 in my notes derivation so what it is here here so you know we have a practice that in lhs side whatever you we are looking into we are going to keep on replacing it with the body of the production correct so for example see here guys in this example only here left side lhs is capital e so what it means i am telling that this capital e can be replaced by e plus t what it means it means that the lhs can be or head of this production can be replaced by body of this production here also head of this production can be replaced by body of this production or this body of the production or this body of the production okay body okay so we can replace the head by body so here the same thing we are telling here we will start our production uh, grammar from the start symbol then replacing a non terminal by the body of one of its productions one of its productions okay what we are replacing we are replacing the non terminal with what we are replacing we are replacing that head or non terminal by the body body of production right so this is nothing but it is called as a derivation we are deriving rhs from the lhs okay so we are yielding rhs from lhs so this derivational view is corresponding to the top down construction of a parse tree this derivation is important for constructing a top down parse tree okay and bottom up parsing is related to class of derivations known as rightmost i already told you l l parsing in today's class in first class right l l parsing is very much suitable for top down parsing and l r parsing l r parsing is very much suitable for bottom up parsing guys keep it in your mind fix compulsory permanently okay so l l parsing is very much suitable for top down construction and l r parsing or l r grammars are very much suitable for bottom up parsing okay so then uh ha huh. in rightmost derivation r means what rightmost derivation rightmost derivation in which the rightmost non terminal is rewritten as at each step just now in morning class i have shown you leftmost derivation and rightmost derivation in leftmost derivation we are keep on replacing leftmost non terminal by the terminal okay in rightmost derivation rightmost derivation we are keep on replacing the rightmost non terminal by the terminal okay so one example here i am going to tell you for leftmost and rightmost once again here in the form of our grammar just observe this grammar guys i have already written one grammar previously that was in the equation 4.3 the same grammar once again i have written here but only one uh, one non terminal i have added to this grammar here that is minus e so this portion guys this portion just observe my mouse cursor this portion was not present in equation 4.3 if you want you open and uh, uh, observe it so guys whenever i am keep on discussing uh, you should have a practice to write these all equations with equation numbers so that it will be very easy for you to refer okay so now at least uh, now you start this practice always attend the classes along with your pen and notebook and you keep on writing these all equations during my explanation okay it will be easy for me as well as for you people to grasp the concept in equation number 4.3 i had written one uh, grammar that grammar was very much similar to this grammar which i am writing now in the 4.7 but except this minus e this minus e is newly added now just one modification i have done okay so what it means a uh, this uh, uh, e is yielding e plus e it is also yielding e star e it is also yielding minus e it is also yielding 
parenthesized e it is also yielding identifier it means that this e can be replaced by e plus e or e minus uh, sorry e star e or minus e or parenthesized e or else identifier so these all possibilities you can do here and here the production e is uh, uh, yielding uh, uh, minus e no it 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 it, it, defo it denotes if it is denoting uh, an expression then minus e can be written like this uh, that is it means that uh, this e can be written with parenthesized e because this e can be replaced by this parenthesized e no so this minus will be as it is and this e can be replaced by this parenthesized e also so here this e is deriving this minus e or e is yielding this minus e right so we can represent it by writing like this e derives minus e so here just observe my explanation guys here for this arrow mark single arrow mark i am pronouncing it as a yielding yield e yielding e plus e e is yielding e star e e is yielding minus e e is yielding parenthesized d e is yielding identifier now i am changing my pronunciation with deriving deriving this double arrow mark says that deriving this is yielding and this is deriving so e is deriving minus e or you can call it as e derives minus e or you can pronounce it as minus e derived from capital letter e okay so now we are going to discuss about derivations der derivations okay so ultimately if you observe that grammar just now whatever i had written ultimately at last you will get this identifier right now let us see one simple example here so this uh, production e yielding parenthesized e if you consider this one this production we can apply or this production we can use to replace any appearances of capital e with any string of grammars symbols by parenthesized e it means that so here for example e star e is there right e star e you can write it like this also you are replacing this first capital letter e with parenthesized e why because of this production you are applying this production to this derivation e star e was there okay this leftmost e is replaced by parenthesized e here and star is as it is and this e is as it is okay so this e star e derives parenthesized e star e or else it derives uh, sorry uh, or else it derives e star parenthesized e okay so we are applying this production to this derivation okay now we can take any one single e and repeatedly apply these productions to get any sequence of replacements for example capital letter e is deriving uh, minus e and in turn minus e is deriving minus of parenthesized e and again this minus of parenthesized e is deriving minus of identifier that is parenthesized identifier what is replaced here now e is replaced by minus e minus e is replaced by minus of uh, parenthesized e and this e e is there no here this e is replaced by identifier so these all are sequence of replacements sequence of replacements are called as derivation of minus id from e derivation of minus id from e it means that we have derived minus id from this capital letter e is it clear or e is deriving or e derived minus id okay so same type of productions once again we will discuss here a is yielding gamma a is yielding gamma okay so here if you consider this production one example you if you apply this production here if you observe this uh, derivation here alpha a beta is deriving alpha gamma beta what is the difference here this e capital a is replaced by gamma why because we are applying this production here we are applying we are using this production 
because you can replace a by gamma here clearly this production is telling that we can replace a by gamma so alpha a beta derived alpha gamma beta and in between these uh, derivations one symbol is there no that is a double arrow mark this double arrow mark says that derives in one step it has taken only one step if you don't write anything on the top of this double arrow mark it says that it derived it in only one step suppose if your derivation is in this format that is alpha 1 is deriving alpha 2 alpha 2 is deriving alpha 3 up to alpha n then these multiple number of derivations are called as we call it as alpha 1 derives alpha n it means the beginning the starting symbol and last symbol which is the result of that symbol so alpha 1 derived that last symbol alpha n so how we got this alpha n by deriving zero or more steps by using zero or more steps okay it is not only one step here multiple number of steps are there so how we can denote it by using this symbol that is double arrow mark on top of it if you write a star it says that it alpha 1 derives alpha n in a zero or more steps okay so because a star is nothing but zero or more right so alpha is deriving alpha by using <coughs> by using zero or more steps okay similarly here alpha is deriving beta by using zero or more steps and beta is deriving gamma with only one step then definitely ultimately alpha derived this gamma by using zero or more steps right and in the place of a star if you write a plus then it is called as derived in one or more steps one or more steps clear guys okay now very important one more point concept i already in morning class i told you a language that can be generated by a grammar is said to be context free language context free grammar you know but what is the context free grammar language the language which is described by or which can be generated by a grammar because grammar will describe the language correct in morning class i told you the definition the grammar defines or describes a language language constructs actually okay so the language which is generated by a grammar is called as context free language okay and also i told you equivalent grammars if two grammars are generating the same language like uh, one example I tell you here don't worry if two grammars are generating same language then that grammars are called as equivalent grammars okay suppose if you consider this string in this example minus id plus id parenthesized id plus id is a sequence of grammars 4.7 in equation 4.7 whatever the grammar you have written by that grammar according to that grammar I am getting this string minus id plus id because there is a derivation like this which derivation e is deriving minus e and again this e is replaced by e parenthesized e again this parenthesized e is e plus e because e you replaced as e plus e then leftmost derivation if you apply then it will become minus id plus capital e then last this e will be replaced as id then it will become minus id plus id this is equation 4.8 just uh, note down it okay leftmost derivation you applied here and same thing same thing by applying rightmost derivation you get this equation e minus e of course 4.8 and 4.9 are almost same up to this portion this portion this portion that is minus e plus e this portion so after that what we are doing just observe here here minus id plus e is there but here it is minus e plus id what what i did here it means i am replacing this rightmost e by id it means it is called as rightmost derivation are you understanding guys this is right leftmost derivation and this is a rightmost derivation this is leftmost and this is rightmost then this id will be also this e will be also replaced by this id then what is the result here same string what you got from previous grammar that is id plus id 
which is a negative that is minus id plus id here also you are getting minus id plus id so both equation both equation number 4.8 and 4.9 are giving you same string right so but only thing is here you applied the leftmost derivation and here you have applied uh, rightmost derivation okay if two grammars are giving you uh, same uh, string then it is called as equivalent grammar then uh, we will come to how exactly parser work we will uh, understand these some derivations uh, and some uh, uh, concepts like leftmost derivations and uh, rightmost derivations so how to understand how parsers work we should consider the derivations which derivation rightmost may be it may be rightmost or it may be leftmost in which the non terminal should be replaced at each step okay correct so what is leftmost derivation already i told you leftmost derivation is nothing but leftmost non terminal you replace with terminal correct in simple manner i am telling you and if you are applying the leftmost derivation only then you should represent it you should denote it so that any readers can understand oh which represent which uh, derivation he has applied here so so very much clear our uh, uh, our explanation should be very much clear so because of that instead of writing it only in this form alpha is deriving beta we should always write it like this alpha is deriving beta by using leftmost derivation so this small letter l m is indicating that i am applying leftmost derivation and always remember at the bottom of this double arrow mark we should write it not at the top in the top we will always write only the number of steps to taken to derive it okay so the first point whatever i have discussed here in simple manner i have written with pencil here always keep on expanding leftmost non terminals it means that always replace the leftmost non terminal by the terminals and the same thing instead of leftmost if you use rightmost derivation you represent it by small letter rm at the bottom of this double arrow mark okay alpha is deriving beta by using rightmost derivation always expand rightmost non terminal it means that always keep on replacing rightmost non terminal by the terminals clear so here the derivation 4.8 is leftmost here this one 4.8 and 4.9 just now i have shown you know this derivation is leftmost derivation and 4.9 is a rightmost derivation correct 4.8 is a leftmost and 4.9 is a rightmost so that 4.8 equation if you rewrite it you should clearly rewrite it okay in previously in equation 4.8 you have told i have told that it is a leftmost derivation but how to tell to others it is a leftmost derivation you should write it clearly like this e can be e is deriving minus e by using leftmost again minus e is again derived minus parenthesized e by using leftmost again left leftmost 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 like this if you rewrite 4.9 here instead of lm 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 you should write rm 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 clear okay guys you understood today so much things now uh, let us go to ha uh, you know uh, always i was telling that yielding 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 so that yield word is here see here we should pronounce it as a yield then uh, uh, let me to explain one uh, uh, parse tree here for the uh, things whatever just now we have seen so suppose e is there no e e is minus e just now i already told you in the equation number 4.8 and equation 4.9 e can be replaced by minus e it means e is deriving minus e and if you replace this e by parenthesized e then the tree looks like this parenthesized open parenthesis e and right parenthesis then again this e will be e plus e then this e will is id and this e is id so the entire tree is giving us the string minus id plus id you just keep on observing the leaf nodes leaf nodes of this tree come from left to right minus 
then uh, open parenthesis then id then plus then id then then last right parenthesis correct this string we got from this parse tree okay so try to understand guys these all are very important and interesting concepts then one more tree i want to show you if you write the same parse tree step by step then sequence of these parse trees will be like this so first parse tree contains only one node that is e which is a root node which is a start symbol then after that start symbol this e is deriving minus e then this minus is here and this e is replaced by parenthesized e then again if you go to next step this e is again expanded as e plus e and again this e is expanded as or replaced by identifier and at last step this e is replaced by identifier this is the resultant parse tree just now in previous page i have shown you this same parse tree right how we constructed that parse tree i am telling you step by step that is from top to bottom top to bottom so since i am telling that we have constructed it from top to bottom so which grammar is suitable here of course l l grammar is suitable ll grammar is suitable okay so because it is top down parsing top down tree and of course in top down ll grammar or ll parsing is suitable what that first l is indicating scan the input from left to right right so definitely you are scanning the input from left to right here right and also you are performing leftmost derivation leftmost derivation because of that only you replaced this e with id not this e are you understanding guys this is l l one parsing only one next character we are looking into so to take a decision so it is called as l l parsing and trees are constructed constructed in the form top down parsing top down clear okay next uh, we will come to next topic that is ambiguity in my notes it is 3.2.5 so already i told you what is ambiguous grammar if a grammar is generating or producing more than one parse tree then that grammar is called as ambiguous grammar okay one example i tell you one arithmetic expression we have written grammar for arithmetic expression we have written in equation 4.3 for your reference once again i have written here guys okay you also should keep on having a practice to keep on writing these all equations in your notes class notes so once again i have written this 4.3 grammar here with pencil so why i had written this grammar for arithmetic expressions okay here e is yielding e plus e e star e parenthesized e and identifier so these are going to give us these are going to give us a string by applying leftmost derivation that string is or sentence is id plus id star id how it is sir let us try try to expand e is deriving e plus e definitely it means that i am applying this production first production e derived e plus e in the next step again e derives id plus e why i applied leftmost derivation here e is ultimately what it is id instead of writing it uh, parenthesized e directly i have written it as a id and again this e this e i replace it with e star e because my string the given string is or my given input sorry given input is id plus id star id if my input is in this way how to write my grammar for this one so first obviously we should give a priority to multiplication then only we should perform addition correct so this e i have kept it as id itself same but this e i will replace it as a e star e then again among these two e leftmost derivation i apply and i replace that capital e by id and here this e is replaced by id so ultimately the string or uh, output what i get here id plus id star id 
one more method is there same thing here instead of a plus okay here e plus e had written okay so here in first example e was yielding e plus e but in second example i am instead of taking this e plus e i take e star e then what happens <coughs> e star e then i keep this first e as a e plus e now i replace this e as a e plus e and star as it is and this capital e as it is now again i am applying leftmost derivation definitely surely and here this e is replaced by id and this e i am keeping it as it is and this star e is as it is in next step what i am doing i am doing among these two e i replace this first e that is leftmost e by id and again last e is replaced by this id again i am getting same string id plus id star id right so for the same grammar we are getting these two derivations methods but actually this leftmost is there no this is actually a correct grammar because here you are applying the precedence you are taking care of a precedence here right so it means that first you will multiply this then you will add this one but here what we are doing here first we are adding then we are multiplying with e so this is not actually correct method of course there is a confusion is there right so that confusion only we have to avoid by using a precedence associativity tools uh, guys uh, my uh, system will uh, shut down now because of no power uh, i end my class today here okay if uh, power comes you keep on observing whatsapp group so i may take a class today or else i continue the class tomorrow okay so no power from morning so uh, sorry for the inconvenience i continue uh, in the next class okay guys uh, okay uh, now you can leave the meeting okay